We are back on Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio, News Talk, 1180, 1230, KGEO, 1410, KERI, and now in Albuquerque, New Mexico on 1000 KKIM. Hey, Clay, are we going to pick up another station in Wyoming or someplace like that? <laughs> uh, maybe in the Soviet Union. Yeah, in the Soviet <laughs> Union. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. We're having a conversation with Diana West, author of a great, great new book I highly recommend, American Betrayal, The Secret secret assault on our nation's character. So, Diane, I want to pick up where, yeah. where you uh, left off there. So we have this revulsion to the Nazis yeah. and what they did in World War II, and I agree with you. Mao, Mao was a lot worse in China, and Stalin yeah. was somewhere in between the two of them, and yet we don't have that same revulsion towards uh, communism. Why? Well, I, I guess it's probably the result of the advance of communist ideas into our own um, atmosphere, into the air we breathe. I mean, think of it. When you make it in America, and you get rich, and you get a beautiful house, and it goes into House Beautiful or House and Garden, very often you also have one of those famous Andy Warhol portraits of Chairman Mao hanging over your mantelpiece. Oh, can you believe that? I mean, this is bizarre. Meanwhile, you have... Um, Senator Joseph McCarthy burns in the hell of the American imagination. He was trying to uncover the communist penetration that had, you know, come into ta- come 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 into being really in the 1930s and 40s. He, along with many other Senate and House investigators, he becomes the great symbol, the great devil signal. But there were actually on both sides of the aisle in the House, in the Senate, great investigators who actually have provided us with a wonderful record um, that we would not otherwise have. Hint, hint, hint to Washington today. But think of it. So you've got. You've got the, per- the figure, sort of the, the figure, the devil figure of McCarthy in, in, in one hand and Chairman Mao in your living room. What's wrong with that picture? Well, I mean, uh, it's, really, it's really kind of um, flabbergasting, but that's where we are today. And, and I, I, you know, I, I hope and I'm, I'm happy about the controversy about my book because I think it does give it more of a... Um, Ah, profile, which, which, you know, I'm turning around myself and, and of course, you know, um, with, with, with a lot of help from, from others who, again, have read it and reviewed it and so on. But, I mean, it's, it's a good thing that there's, that there's lightning over this subject because it is shocking and it, it is controversial and it, I think it does require Americans to really stop and read and think and, and sort of figure this out for themselves and moving, moving along. I think that uh, communism is more accepted today in the United States, especially at the top, than it ever has been in the past. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I mean, I think it's, you know, we talk about, oh, we won the Cold War. Isn't that wonderful? Well, here we are. We have practically every college campus in America could be described as an outpost of Marx. And we have Republican majority in the House that cannot mess, muster the votes to defund socialized medicine. Right. Right? right? So, I mean, you know, you cut, but people will say, oh, but we won the Cold War. And I say, well, maybe abroad. What about at home? Wasn't there a Cold War at home? This is sort of another theme of American betrayal. Yes, and we lost. And we're going to continue to lose with you keep this same administration in place. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> it's there for another three years. Not a whole lot we can do about it. You know, going back to World War II for, for a moment, sure. you know, one, one of the things that— um, one of the the issues that's always been on my heart is the POW issue, and in yeah. you know, the last couple of years, they recently came out with the fact that there's there were twenty thousand Americans ended up uh, uh, as POWs in Russia that uh, you know are by now long gone, but they ended up you know they're just being there, and we never got them out. We never did anything at all to get them out. Well, this is the ultimate American betrayal. I mean, that, that figure, it, it's, not, it's not exactly sure what the figure is. It, as of 1945, at the end of World War II, the documents show, and these are documents that I include in, in American Betrayal, they do show that the best estimates were something like between 15,000 and 20,000 American GIs still in Soviet-held territory. Because, of course, they'd been prisoners of, of Nazi German camps during the war, and then they were, quote, liberated by the Red Army. And... Thousands of them seem not to have come home. Um, General Eisenhower seems to have signed off um, um, in terms of, of deciding that there would be none who would come home at a certain point, which I also document. Um, and then they kind of drop off our radar because their families were told right away, well, all these men we carried on the books as missing in action are, are really gone and you know, will only be seen stragglers from here on in. 
this is a tremendously shocking story that was actually pulled together from the original documents back in 1990 by uh, staff on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. So, I mean, this isn't, you know, out of the ether or crazy stuff. These are real documents, real cables that a real Senate committee put together. But what happened? Nobody really wanted to look at it. Um, kind of disappeared. So that was another another uh, uh, sort of vector of betrayal that, that I tried to bring to light because it's really, really important that we know the truth and we know what American governments can do, successive administrations. We saw this, you know, again in Korea, again in Vietnam. I mean, this, this is a reality we need to take out of the Rambo sort of, is it fiction, is it real realm of the imagination and try to really bring to book. Um, it, it, it's 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 a you know it's it's a tremendous shame and travesty and that that is something that we need to come to terms with and get more information on. I mean, there is much much information that Americans that belongs to America that are that are in our archives and and that need to come out at this point. I mean, fifty, sixty, seventy years later. I mean, it's time it's time to open the archives. Yeah, Diana, it's it's interesting. There's a book called uh, Coming Out of the Ice. It was a gentleman who was a was a POW in in Russia for about forty years, a prisoner in the camps. And really? He, I don't yeah. know that book. Oh, great book. And he uh-huh. talks. In fact, they made it into a movie. It's funny. The, the character that sticks in my mind was one of the American soldiers was portrayed portrayed by Willie Nelson, of all people. Huh? But, uh, uh-huh. yeah, great, great movie. But anyways, mm-hmm. he, he freely talks about the fact that there were POWs, uh, Americans from World War II, in, in the camps. So Yeah, but, uh, yeah. There, there's yeah. anecdotal information. It was actually collected. Eventually, there was a POW MIA commission report that I believe came out yes. in 2005. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the head of it, I mean, it came out with very little fanfare. Um, but, you know, the, the head of it admitted, I mean, I think it was a CNN report was the best thing I could find where he gave an interview, and he said, yes, he was comfortable with admitting there were, you know, there were men from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Cold War, in the Soviet gulag, and he would, you know, get no, no more specific than saying hundreds, um, hundreds of men. But, you know, this was quite an admission after all of these years of denial that there was anybody um, and, you know, the figures, I think, um, when someone says they're comfortable with hundreds, you know, goodness knows what the real number is. We, we don't know, sure. um, but we do know that, that they were there. Scary. Our guest by phone, Diana West, author of American Betrayal, The Secret Assault on Our Nation's Character. You know, Diana, we talk about POWs, and we currently have a POW in Iran. Yes that uh, the government seems to have forgotten about, that we, we've we done a number of shows on that POW and trying to raise uh, signatures to get him out. But we the government just seems to have dropped this young fella. Yeah. yeah it's, well, it's there's, there's also Bo Bergdahl in Afghanistan. That's him. That's yeah, who we're talking about. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. talking about Bo, Bo Bergdahl. Yeah, yeah, I thought you said Iran at first. Yeah, I Afghanistan. Did. Yeah. Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all the same, isn't yes. it? <laughs> no. Well, no, I know, I know countries. what you mean, but no, yeah, I know, I know. It, it, it's it's heartrending, and and again, it's one of these stories. They, it, you know, it's one man. It's not thousands, but I mean, this is our guy. This is our man, and and he he should be on on people's minds. I'm glad you're I'm glad you're involved in that. It is. Um, I think the the thing that was most disturbing to me, and I say this, my father was actually um, a veteran of World War II. He's a veteran of the Normandy invasion, um, D Day plus two. Um, the callousness with which the government um, treats its its best young men who go abroad to fight wars, um, it, this was, really was the gut-wrenching, most gut-wrenching part of, of writing American Betrayal, because I had no idea going into it the kind of research that I would uncover, and I, I, had, never, I had never sat with the POW MIA literature before and really studied it and realized that all these years we've, we've been taught to think people who talk about it are a little crazy. Yes. And there's just too much evidence of it, and, and it's, it's, there's too many patterns of, 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 ca- of discarding the, the witnesses, the people who escaped, the you know, various reporters um, on the right and the left who've looked into it, whether it's Sidney Shanberg on the left and Joseph Douglas on the right. I mean, it, it's a real issue, and it's never been fully addressed. It's been kind of a political football. Sure. Um, so, you know, that's another piece of it. Yeah, and Diana, we're we're running out of time, unfortunately. We should have had you for the whole hour. We'd love to have I'll you back. Come back. Yeah, good, <laughs> good. Well, I have one question. We've got about two minutes left. I sure. got one question for you, and I think this is one of the questions that that probably got you in a lot of heat as far as the the heat you're getting for the book. Sure. But do you think there was a lot of communist penetration in Washington during World War II that prevented us from uh, doing more things in in terms of of helping? say, the Jews and the concentration camps and, and uh, other things in World War II? 
Well, I didn't see it in terms of, of the Jewish, uh, uh, of the Holocaust. I didn't see it affecting that. What I was looking at was influence. Influ- it isn't so much people stealing secrets or battle plans, that kind of thing. What I was looking at were people we could identify as having Soviet interests at heart, very often could be tagged directly to KGB handlers and that kinds of things, KGB assets, KGB agents, and so on. Some of them are, are a little more nebulous. But what I was looking at was evidence of influence that turned policy in the Soviet Union's favor, and I would say the biggest, most horrifying uh, development that I, I, I found, that I, I believe is, is dead to rights influence operation, is I do believe that World War II could have been brought to a close a couple of years earlier, or at least there would have been a chance, had we not been communist penetrated to a point where the anti-communist, anti-Nazi German resistance groups who were trying to reach out to us throughout the war were um, turned back. They were they yes. were stopped at various desks, where whether it was at OSS, which is the precursor to CIA, or at the White House. There are, there are any number of places where you see evidence of communist agents, communist influence operators, trying to undercut or indeed rebuff these anti-communist Germans who are also anti-Nazi. And that, to me, is, is the great tragedy, because at the time they were really reaching out to us, like 1943, most of the people, including the Jews, but also the, uh, all the other millions of people as well who were killed in Europe during World War II were still alive, along with most of the cities that we would destroy in the firebombings l- later in the war were still standing. Yeah, so in incredible. other words, civilization had not completely been destroyed yet, and this do lay down to communist penetration in Washington. Definitely. The book, American Betrayal, The Secret Assault on a Nation's Character by Diana West. We highly, highly recommend it. Diana, thank you so much for the time, and we are going to have you back. Great. Thank you. Take care now. We'll be back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.